to tell you up front, and I'm going to remind you again here at the end, in case we have some people come late or you got to get off the call, uh, June 1st is right around the corner. How crazy is that? That will leave us just a couple months until the conference kicks off in August. And uh, we just want to remind you the cost for the conference will go up in June. June 1st, it goes up to $80 per person to attend. So really want to encourage you, especially if uh, I know we have a lot of men that are uh, potentially trying to get a church group come in or men from their church to uh, get their men's ministry to, to tag along to the conference this year. So get on that before the cost goes up. There'd also be some uh, potential group rates for something like that, but we also uh, don't want anybody to have to pay more than they have to. So please make a note of that. Let somebody know if you got a friend that's thinking about attending uh, that June 1st is coming. I'm just gonna go ahead and pray us in this morning, introduce our speaker and we will dive right in. So let's pray this morning. Father, uh, we love you. We're so thankful uh, that you have given those of us that have gathered this morning. Travis, your mic muted, brother. Travis, Travis, your mic, your mic muted. muted for some reason, brother. There we go. Better. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, our speaker this morning is no stranger to any of us. Uh, brother Hank Sharp, uh, known him for many years, dear friend, and just seen his passion for God explode uh, over that time. And you guys are going to be blessed and encouraged this morning. So if you don't have a pen and paper, I would encourage you to get something out so you can take some notes. And uh, Hank, look forward to hearing what God has from you, brother. So unmute and take it away. All right, y'all got me. Good to go. Technology is cooperating, so yay me. And my uh, the devil's attempt at taking my voice has failed miserably. So we are ready to go. Uh, what we're going to be speaking from is starting out in Jeremiah two nine through 13 and i'll just go ahead and start reading from there um basically a little history on it basically what we're looking at is the priests and the prophets uh were all if all turned from their god and are now accepting the gods of the country that they're in talking about Baal and all those other kind of things and they're not focusing on god as their god they're letting everything else get in the way and the work of their hands and everything else. So we're at verse nine it says, therefore, I will yet contend with you, declares the Lord. You imagine that. When you think about. Things you have done, when you think about without the love of Christ. Then that statement applies to you. Therefore, I will yet contend with you, declares the Lord. Of all the things the Lord declares in the Bible, I do not want him to declare that against me, that he has yet to contend with me, you know, but because of Christ's love, you know, that should give you pause and more adoration and more joy at the fact that he has contended with us through Christ. Right. And then, and with your sons, I will contend for the cross to the coastlands of Kittim and see and send to Kedar and observe closely and see if there has been such a thing as this. Has a nation changed gods when they were not gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. That's another statement. They've changed their glory for that which does not profit. Every morning we wake up and we have a choice to, to dive in, like we're doing right now, dive in, 
get more of God, get more of his glory, get more of his spirit, just get more of the good that he has to offer us. Or we can choose to chase that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this, and shudder. Be very desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and they have hewn for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. It's useless. A broken cistern, it, it does, does no good. It does absolutely no good. And what it kind of stands in, in contrast to the one, one concept that we grasp is that we're all broken vessels. Yes, I get that. We are a broken vessel, but God makes us useful. But when we get on here, and this is something that my pastor had talked about, and it kind of sprung this up, not sprung. Anyway, it kind of brought this up in my head. But that's to look at the fact of the difference between a bucket and a bucket with a hole in it. Right When we get on here or we go to church or we read the word or we do a devotional or we do anything like that, and then in that, we don't really give it our all. We're not retaining the information. And as a kid with ADHD, I can tell you it's hard sometimes to retain information. Sometimes I got to go back and read three, four, five times. Sometimes I got to stop what I'm reading and be like, there's something in there for me. And then I go and look up what somebody else said, look up maybe a sermon on that particular scripture and try and get more, try and get more and try and retain it, try and get it to a point where it sticks in. Maybe I go back and read it again throughout the day, but it's the study. It's the, the, the reaping of what's in there and then keeping it because without it, you're basically a bucket with a hole in the bottom of it. You're letting the information come in. It's going right out the bottom and it does nobody any good doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do those around you any good. If you're in ministry, it doesn't do the ministry any good. It doesn't do the glory of God any good. It doesn't do the kingdom of God. Any good. So you're just getting information and putting it straight out. It's like empty calories. You're taking it in. It's not doing it. It's coming right back out. It's not doing any good. You're not getting any gains off of it. You're not getting any nutrients off of it because you're not retaining it. That's where the study of the word, not just the reading of the word, but the study of the word. The word examines us. The word comes in and the word looks us over and then we look at the word and, and it shows us something that's right, something that's wrong, something that's going on that is not worthy and that we need to change, right? So it says in James one, 21 through 25. I'll flip over there real quick. At least I can read today. Praise God. James 1, Get this Baptist air conditioning going. Y'all ever heard of Baptist air conditioning? It's when the pages flip. It's that little breeze that comes up. Baptist air conditioning. You didn't think he was going to get through one of these without a dad joke in there somewhere. It's going to happen. All right, so James 1, 21 through 25. It says, therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness and humility, receive the word and plan it, which is able to save your soul, which is enough right there. I could be like, all right, cool. Anybody got any comments? Just leave that. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers of the word who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. And then once he has looked at himself, gone away and has immediately forgotten what the person that he was. Now, if I look, because I'm going to admit, I'm not a vain person, but I'm going to look at myself in the mirror before I get on here and bring a word on man that Monday. So I ain't, you know, 
got eye boogers in my eye from sleeping. I ain't got no snot on my nose and it's cold. I'm going to make sure. Now, if I'd have looked in that mirror and seen something messed up, you know, like I got a big snot rocket hanging out my mustache, whatever. I'm not going to go look in the mirror and then not fix that before I leave the house, before I go out of the house. Or you see your kids get ready to go to school, go get some, go get some clothes on. And they come out with some clown pants and a chef hat on. You're not going to tell them to fix. I mean, you're going to tell them to fix that mess so they don't go out the house looking crazy. But this is basically saying that you looked in the mirror, saw that you were jacked up, and then just turned around and left the house. You didn't fix. You didn't do what it said. I mean, our, our faith is believing what this word says about God and then changing what it says we need to change about ourselves and then going out and telling what has been changed through the power of God, not of ourselves, but going out and telling that and sharing that with others. Now, when we go to that, the sharing of others, we're going to go to Matthew 25. <clears throat> Excuse me, 14. There it is. All right, so we flip on over to Matthew 25, 14. All right, this is a parable of talents. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it looks like we. I'm not sure where I'm at on time, but so basically it's the man that went on a journey and he gave five talents to each of his, each of his servants, right? And we've all heard this story where they multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and the one being scared, you know, fearing his master or whatever, hid the one. So the one talent that he gave him, the stuff that he gave him, he didn't share, you know, he didn't multiply it. He just kept it to himself. And that goes back to our bucket, right? So if our bucket, let's say we do, we don't have any holes in the bucket, but we just bring the bucket up and we get the bucket full, right? Because if you ever watched a bucket or a cup or anything else, you have something in the bucket. The more fluid you put in, the more that's going to run over, right? And so whatever you had in there to start with is now completely changed. And less of what you had in there to start with is the old stuff because the new stuff coming in is just forcing it out, forcing it out, forcing it out. So at the end, you end up with something new, right? So you're taking the old you and you're pouring more of God and more of God and more of God and more of God. And the more of God that you're putting in, the less of you there is room for in there you can't compete the more of you there is in there the less room you have for god the more of god is in there the less room you have for yourself but let's say you get full you're full up to the top right can you take in any more you have to let that overflow you have to let it go and use it because water in a bucket does does the soil no good the water's got to be used for something it can't just sit in a bucket. What happens when it sits in a bucket? It gets stagnant. Algae starts to grow on it. You get mosquitoes breeding. If you're in the south, you got mosquitoes breeding on it. It don't matter how much water it is or where it's at. If you leave water sitting long enough, they don't come. But the water does nobody any good because it just gets old and still. We used to have a saying in the military, you move like pond water. It means you're slow. Right? And if it sits there, it does no good. So we've got to multiply that. We've got to take what we take in, spread that around, and then take in some more. Because once, believe me, God's not going to run out. He ain't going to run out. You take what he gives you and you make, make good of it, he's going to give you some more. This ain't prosperity gospel. I'm talking about he's going to get some more of what you desire, which is him. That's where they get it wrong. The desire of your heart should be him. If you want some more of God, you go get some more of God. You ask for more of God, you're going to get some more of God. You seek more of God, you will find more of God. And you take what you found 
and you tell everybody because you want everybody to know what you know. <laughs> and they'll be able to tell. They'll be able to look at you and say, there's something about that guy right there that I want some of. You know, and, and then the more that you do that, the more he will give you. But the more you put things in his way, the more that's going to stop. That's going to get confused. That's going to get blurry, to use a vision term right now. And it's going to get hard to see, which confessionally, in my affliction, in my ailment, in my being out of work because my eyes don't work and all this other kind of stuff, you would think that I would get closer because I'm just sitting at home. That I would just get, I would just be in the word all the time because I didn't have nothing but time to be in the word. I'm in the word less since I've been out of work than I was when I was working. I'm still doing my time in the morning, but I'm so distracted with, okay, I got stuff coming up, you know, the bills and and I got less money in the house and blah, blah. blah and I'm, a, you know, and then the fact of, I went from a 20 year military career to I was retired for maybe two weeks and I was back at work. Lost that job back at work in a week. I've never been out of work more than a week. I've never been at home, like not working and while my wife goes to work and everything else and I'm at home. And that for the first little, the last couple of weeks has been emasculating to me. You know, and, and it's it's distracting me from true purpose, which is this book and my time in ministry, my time with you guys, my time. I could be multiplying all this stuff, and I'm not. I'm just sitting around, you know, pity party of one when I could be diving in here. Which is why when I heard there was a chance to jump on here and do a teaching, that's exactly what I did. Because it gave me a point to, okay, I've got to have something ready to talk on or, you know, I'm going to look like Boo Boo the Fool out here. So I had to double down and get back in my word. And it's it's been a blessing to be able to prepare and come in here and bring this word to y'all. But I'm not sure where I'm at on time. It's like terrible at time management. But that's the that's the word. I encourage you uh, if if you have not really de dove into the parable of talents, uh, it would be a great thing to look at. Uh, maybe you've never looked at it from that perspective of using word from God that He's given you to to share the gospel. Uh, but I definitely look into it. But Travis, that's that's, that's what I got, brother. Well. That was uh, very powerful, Hank. Um, I tell you, too, it's, I, I appreciate your honesty and transparency with where you're at, where you've been. Uh, <clears throat> I would tell you just as, as a friend and, and someone that knows you, that's one of your most powerful teachings I've ever heard you give. Um, that was straight up good. And it spoke to some deep places and convicted me in some ways. Um, that I needed to be convicted in. Do we retain the word of God through study or are we just like a bucket with a hole in it, just dumping it in and letting it go right out? You know, my wife and I, uh, we take pride in, and we shouldn't, but we take pride in taking our notebooks to church every week and just filling them up with notes. You know, we don't need the bulletin. We'll just fill up these note pages. And quite honestly, I don't do anything with that during the week. It makes me pay attention during the sermon and it makes me remember and think about it. Uh, but I need to start getting those notebooks out every week and just pouring over those pages and not just depend on my quiet time. Uh, Cause otherwise what I'm doing on Sunday mornings, what Hank just said, just a bucket, I'm pouring it in and it's coming right out the bottom as I walk out the door. So um, that was good. Thank you, Hank. <clears throat> There's a lot more I can say, but I want to give you guys a chance to share. And for the record, Nikki does take copious. copious. <laughs> Yes, that is true. My bride, it's almost word for word. So if you're teaching or speaking in front of her, if there's ever a couple's conference or you're at our church, you better make sure uh, what you say because she'll call you on that. <laughs> uh, any, any thoughts you guys have, go ahead and get your hands up and uh, we'll get to you. Uh, 
And uh, I know, like I said, it was, that was needed for me. It was good, good word. All the passages of scripture just really spoke to me tremendously. So if you guys got something, go ahead and put it up. I wrote down a couple prayer requests, so we'll get to those in a minute. But uh, I want to give you guys a chance to share. Uh, down under his hand is up. So go ahead and unmute, guys. And uh, let's hear what you guys got. G'day. Yeah, the um, the analogy of the buckets used is actually quite a bit. One of my pastors likes to point out, we all constantly need to get filled up because buckets leak. If you think about it, as we go along, we always leak and we're always needing more of God anyway. The other thing is that with that very analogy of when you pour something into a bucket you know, or a cup, you pour it in, doesn't matter what it is, that, that's going to replace what's in there. So if you're filling up with stuff that isn't God, that yeah. will then still also take out what God has been putting in. And for me, I've had some interesting conversations with people. It's really confronted me on where I've fallen short in recent years and where I've been doing well. And it's really, been really having me reevaluate of what am I filling up on all the time. Yeah. And like yourself, Hank, I've got a lot more free time. The last few years, I've been doing a lot of ministry and studies and so forth. This year, all I'm doing is working and working on my first year of marriage with my wife. But she works from 6 till 10 p.m. I get home from work about 6 o'clock. So I've got a whole evening free each night, each weeknight. And so that huge amount of free time, like you say, for me, that's now been without that, without a focal point of ministry or of Bible college or of all the stuff I've been doing, which has all been good stuff without a focal point. It is difficult, but of course, discipline isn't easy. And that's where we've, we as men have to really either cash in our man card or we really hold on to it. And actually we, we need to, I've been trying to, and I've had God really pinpoint a few things I need to change on that. And to be honest, the main thing is actually to get accountability on that stuff because we've all got, we're all going to have times when we're busy and we're all going to have times that we're not busy. And what we do in that, that really makes a big difference when we do get busy in ministry. I mean, there was a pastor who once said, Jesus was always busy, but never in a hurry. And we see he spent a lot of time in prayer one-on-one -on -one with God, but when he was out there ministering, all that was coming out. We see he, he prayed long with God, but in public he prayed very short, powerful stuff because what he did in his downtime really overflowed in his ministry. So yeah, that's what's really come to heart and mind over what you've been sharing. That's, that's really good. That's really good. I, I like what you said to you. <clears throat> it depends on what you're putting in as well right it, it reminds me of an old lyric in a band i used to like a lot where they said a glass can only spill what it contains you know and <clears throat> you're not going to pour coffee and gasoline into the same cup and take a sip right <laughs> and uh, oftentimes what we need to do well hank might i mean he was army so <laughs> oftentimes what we need to do though is we need uh we need to clean out that bucket right we need to scrub it clean and, and allow god to to fill us up uh, with what he wants for us. That was, that was really good. I like that. And I also like being uh, busy, but not in a hurry. Uh, I tell you that, that I can't speak for cultures around the world, but certainly in America, that is, that is one of our struggles is busyness. Um, but that does not mean that we can't slow down in the midst of busyness. And uh, I think it's kind of what you were alluding to a little bit when you were teaching there, Hank, as far as just, um, getting in the word and, and really allowing it to change us. I think sometimes we're so busy. Uh, we don't even sit in it long enough for the Holy spirit to start unpacking things in our life and in our heart that he wants to deal with. We just, Oh, I got my reading done. So I got to check that box and get on to what's next. And uh, I think it would behoove all of us as men, when God creates those spaces in our life of extra time to sit with him, to sit with them, to, to go out in your back deck, go out in the woods, go for a walk, uh, 
go in your bedroom, go like wherever you got to go to get away from distractions and just sit and, and ask him to, to speak into your life and, and to teach you and to reveal and, and do some work. Um, <clears throat> because that first verse you read was a punch between the eyes. <laughs> we don't want to get to the point where God says, all right, I'm going to contend with you. You've run long enough. Sit down. We're going to go through some stuff. Uh, I see brothers getting those places all the time in the app and it breaks my heart and I, I don't want to be that man. I've been that man and it is not a, an enjoyable place to be. All right. Uh, just a couple minutes. Anybody, anything else? Otherwise, I'm just going to bring up a couple prayer requests. Yes, Tim, go for it. Hey, good morning, fellas. Uh, Hank, thanks for sharing. Uh, appreciate you, brother. Um, I had heard somebody talk about this passage before in, in Jeremiah, and uh, the, the guy that I heard uh, share uh, from verse 13, uh, he used a term that was, was pretty powerful. I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, he said verse 13 talks about the ultimate essence of evil, uh, was how he termed it. And what, what he defined that as from verse 13 is abandoning God and God's plan for us with the living water and saying, I don't want what you have for me. I'll do it myself. I'm going to dig, I'm going to dig a cistern for myself. And then as we see in verse 13, it's a crack cistern. It doesn't work. But, uh, this guy that was teaching said, that's the ultimate essence of evil saying no to God. And, and doing it yourself. And uh, I know I'm guilty of that a lot. Um, our pastor shared yesterday uh, in his sermon that um, prayer is the indicator of whether we're doing things on our own or not, or whether we think we're in charge or not. So your prayer life, and I'm pointing, pointing at me, this guy right here, if I'm not praying, that means I'm doing things on my own. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm saying I'm in charge. When I'm praying, uh, and my life is, is, uh, characterized by prayer. It's because I need God and I'm recognizing him as Lord of my life and I need his power and I need his guidance. Um, so anyway, anyway, um, need to not dig our own cisterns. We need to, we need to take, take the living water that God provides for us. I'm glad you jumped on Tim. That was that was powerful too. I, I just, uh, it's easy to hear things like that sometimes and immediately default, right? The ultimate essence of evil. Well, I'm not as bad as, um, but we, we are that when we reject what Christ has for us. Uh, see one more hand up. Couldn't tell you who it is because it says iPhone. So iPhone, what you got for us? Hey, what's up guys? So uh, weren't sure if I was going to share or not. I said, if it's still on, when I get down my run, I'll share. And I just finished when Tim got done. Uh, man, Hank, great word. Uh, my first, the really, the big thing that really hit me was Hank said this, that God should be the desire of our heart. That God should be the desire of our heart. I thought of Matthew 6, 33, where it says, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Then also I thought of the scripture where it says, you will find me when you seek for me with all your heart uh, man i know that's a the you know the lord will give you heart's desire is a scripture it gets taken out of context you know because a lot of people use that for a prosperity that because i want this worldly stuff uh if that's my heart desire i get it but man it just really hit me when hank said god should be our heart's desire because if our heart's desire is truly god is truly following jesus we will get that because he said if you seek me with all your heart you will find me. So I don't know. It's just an encouragement to me just to be a reminder. My heart's desire it should be God above everything else. And if it is, I will receive it. Thanks, Travis. Love you. Thank you, Eric. Good to hear your voice. And uh, yeah, great share. Again, so many distractions in this world that keep us from our whole heart's desire being bent towards Christ. Good distractions, too, as well as bad ones you know, but seek him with all of our heart. So good. All right. We're up against it. Uh, we're going to close out in prayer. I want to remind you guys, uh, Keith Goddard asked for prayer in the chat for his bride. Uh, please be in prayer for her and 
for their 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 family as she's going through some some transitions and stuff. Uh, I'm going to ask if you'd be in prayer for my daughter. Her name is Elizabeth. She goes by Lizzie. She deploys with the Navy on Wednesday of this week, and uh, we'll be going out for a while over towards uh, the other side of the world. And then also, we want to remember, as as you guys have shared, also be in prayer for Hank uh, and his situation with his eyes and uh, what all God's doing in his life because certainly it involves more than just eyes like he said the transition of being at home and processing all that used to being at work every day and so let's make sure we hold pink up in prayer as well uh russ i'm gonna ask would you mind unmuting and closing us out in prayer this morning and uh we'll get after it today yeah dear lord just thank you for the work today and gathering this man um we appreciate every day that we can just come closer to you hear your word, understand it. Please just have our buckets be full, full, filled with you. We look for you at every chance we can get. Appreciate these men. Appreciate the work from Hank. We pray for Keith and his bride. Pray for Lizzie as she gets um, sent overseas. We pray over Hank's and his eyes in this situation. Love you. Appreciate you. And just help us to take on the world today. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Russ. And on behalf of the executive team and especially our illustrious leader, Eric Stewart, as he likes to say, go light it up for the king. So, Hank, thank you again, brother. Appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful Monday and hopefully we'll see you back next week.